whole new hole had just opened up up here and it looked like he'd just busted through there. Morning guys, welcome to Wild Hope Homestead. So we had a bit of an incident yesterday. Good morning. <laughs> so yesterday I came out to collect the eggs. Just a bit before five. And I found Ben Wyatt in here, in this pen over here. It's supposed to be in the corner. Um, and somehow, like this, I've had, this fence was falling apart a little bit at the bottom and I was propping it up with bricks and pulling it back together. But somehow a whole new hole had just opened up up here and it looked like he'd just busted through there basically. <laughs> Hey buddy, um, he doesn't look too badly off, he's a bit damaged around his comb, but he didn't look too bad. And so I looked around the pen and I couldn't see Basil, which was not great, because um, he's always right under my feet. And I went to look in the coop not knowing, you know, thinking he could, I mean he could even be dead if they had a bad fight. And he was in there, he was just scratching down on the floor, um, looking pretty battered. And here he is now, he's, I think he's okay, he's out in the back. He doesn't look great in his face. So first I secured the gate patched it up with a bunch of pieces of wire to make it stronger. I'll have to do something proper about that in the near future. You know, to look at Basil, he sort of, I think he had a little bit, a little sore bit on one toe, but it seems like it's mostly around his head. The worst bit was just behind his comb. So I patched up his wounds, tried to wash them but it was hard when it's around the face because I didn't want to get stuff in his eyes but and put some stuff on him and he seems to be alright he was yeah once he sort of realised Ben Wyatt was back in the, the corner um, and I was out here to help he came out and started eating so that's always a good sign um, I think he's alright. I might put some stuff. Oh, have you opened up a little bit on your face, dude? I'll have to have another look at him today and put some more stuff on his face. Um, I might put some stuff in the water too. Some extra vitamins or something to help them out. But he's getting around alright and he's crowing, so those are good signs of. Things been white here. Yeah, you're just fine, buddy. But um, that's the thing, you know. They were getting along fine. I thought they had been scrapping a bit, but it was actually Ron Swanson and Basil through the fence, and they used to get on really well. But as soon as you separate them, it's a different ball game. And once you separate them, you can't really put them back in together again because they just fight. So once I've got eggs for hatching from them, I'm going to have to make a top decision. So 
this is the worst rooster fight we've actually had. Um, it's only really only the second rooster fight we've had, I think. Um, usually I only have one or two roosters or cockerels and uh, once I've used one for breeding then I choose which one I'm going to keep and then they just stay with the main flock until young ones get bigger and then the cycle goes on. Yeah, the last time we had a rooster fight was like five years ago um, and I had two um, cockerels who were maturing to um, I can't remember how old they were, but they used to, they were hatched at the same time and they got along really well, uh, really well, like best buddies, they used to hang out together until one day I went out there and just found them fighting and chasing with bloodied combs and faces um, and neither of them would would let go of trying to be the boss, so that's the trouble. If one rooster's more dominant, then the other one will usually respect that one um, and can back down if they do end up fighting a little bit. Um, the way I usually do it is just I have the head rooster, the older rooster, and raise the young ones in there. And so they grow up knowing that that rooster's the boss and it's not usually well, it hasn't been a problem unless they're separated and then <laughs> apparently find themselves back together again accidentally. Um, so, like with the last time I had those two siblings who were fighting, well, I tried putting, I tried putting one into a small makeshift pen within the main pen. Um, right in, sort of in the middle of the main pen and that didn't help, they were still fighting through the fence so I switched them around, put the other rooster in there and the other one out and they were still fighting so I had to just decide which one I was going to keep and which one was going to go to the freezer so basically I don't think Basil and Ben White are going to be able to get along even though Basil was the head rooster He's not a very assertive, aggressive rooster. I mean, he's a very nice rooster. He's he's um, he's very friendly, um, and he does fine looking after the girls. But I don't think he's assertive enough to hold um, his position as boss over Ben White now that Ben White's been separated. So. Um, Yep, we're just going to have to see how they go and then, I mean we've got some weeks anyway, it's still a few weeks before we can collect eggs for hatching and we have to wait a week longer now just to make sure that Ben Wyatt didn't fertilise any of Basil's girls' eggs. So we'll see how we go. I've been rendering some large. We're just about at the end of the process now. I've been scooping out the large as we go it's um this is just like pork skin or pork crackling that you can buy sometimes from grocery stores or butchers um chop it up into little pieces and then just render them slowly in the slow cooker on low or you can do it in a pot and then we just Slowly, the fat slowly melts down and leaves the crispy harder bits. I've been scooping it out into cheesecloths over a little sieve, over a little jug. Whoops, I like to make a mess of things. And then I tip that out on into a little jar. So this is how much I've got out so far. It's kind of like a golden brownie colour until it gets cold and solidifies. You can see there are a couple of slightly different layers in there. The bottom one's the hardest. And that's kind of one of the main ways we have to get lard at the moment because lard is very hard to find these days around where we live anyway. We used to be able to buy lard from the supermarket but they don't stock it anymore unfortunately. So there's one place online I found, well there are a couple of places online but there's one place that's worth the cost of shipping if we bought it in bulk, uh, but it's a matter of uh, 
how many kgs of lard do we need at a time or do we need to pay for it at a time so I'm just making some at the moment because lard is really very tasty and it's one of the few food sources that actually has vitamin D in it um, and it's really good for roast veggies. The best lard you can uh, get is leaf lard which is the fat from around the organs of the pig but we can't get our hands on any of that at the moment until we have a bigger property where we can raise our own pigs one day so uh, yeah, this is how we're doing it for now I've got the ginger here that I bought from the store I cut it into five sections making sure none of them are too small and they've all got eyes more than one eye on them um, and I've let them cure for a few days after I soaked them just to dry out the cuts and I'm gonna try planting them now and we'll see what happens <laughs> I'm looking through my pots trying to decide which ones to use for the ginger. I'll need to use two anyway. I'm trying to decide if this one's big enough. They don't they need a decent amount of width but they don't need too much depth. This one is about 25 centimeters deep I think. 20 oh maybe only no about 20 centimeters deep maybe. So I don't know that it's quite big enough. It's great for bulbs but <laughs> Uh, it might be okay. I might put two in there. They're supposed to be about 20 centimetres apart, spaced apart. So I think I could put two in there. And then this is a uh, 30 litre, 40 centimetre pot. So it'll be 40 centimetres across. Um, so I could probably get away with three in there, maybe. And that should definitely be deep enough. Um, it's looking a bit taller than that one. So we'll just see. We're all figuring out what works well. I'm having trouble getting my hands on the Dalton's potting mixes and seed raising mixes at the moment, the organic ones. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, if it's a Bunnings thing or what, but. I'm trying out the Tui organic mixes instead. So I've got this trio to try out. I've got the Tui performance organic seed raising mix. I haven't tried that yet. We've got the potting mix and we've got the vegetable mix. The potting mix is what I've got the horseradish and the peppermint planted in. And is the elderberry? Oh no, I think the elderberry is in the other potting mix. So I'm going to put the vegetable mix into these pots for the ginger because it's probably the best thing to feed them. They will need a lot of feeding. So let's get these filled up. up a whole bag of potting mix. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna put the ginger in and then I'm gonna top it with the general purpose potting mix. That should be all right. Okay I put the smallest two in this one and the bigger three in this pot. I'm supposed to plant them with the eyes facing up and a few inches down. I've topped the pots off with the general purpose potting mix and I mixed in a little bit of Yates Dynamic Lifter, which is um, an organic pelleted product. <laughs> Whoops, where did that go? Oi! I'm losing my marbles. An organic pellet, which is made out of composted manure and seaweed, and let's have a look what it says on the back. Composted manure, blood and bone, fish meal and seaweed. So that should, I've mixed that in, and that should help um, give the ginger a good feed. And now I'm going to top it with, what have I got? Still got some barley straw. Yes, top it with some barley straw to help <laughs> keep the moisture in and keep it warm at the moment. And I'm going to put them on the deck. So here's our ginger on the pot, in the pots on the deck under the table 
Uh, ginger does need like warm conditions to grow and it needs a long growing season that's why you start at kind of at the end of winter or very early spring is best so it is a long season and yeah obviously it likes the heat but it's naturally an understory plant so full sun or a lot of sun on it is not good it needs shade and filtered light is best so we'll see how it goes here Hopefully Scarlet's not going to get into it. Uh, I can always move it somewhere else if I need to. Since we've been finding some little rocks. From where? From the sand. In your garden. In the herb <laughs> sand garden. sand that we put in the herb garden. <laughs> Steve keeps looking out in the morning and thinking there's frost. Well, some mornings there has been, but it always looks a bit more white over there. Until it gets mixed in. Very nice. got a lot of branches to burn, so I'm burning stuff. Dry, so they're good for getting it going. But this is what we've done. The branches were, where were they up to before? Like the sides, some of them. Um, and we've got them down really low, so it's looking hey, much better. Yay! What was that? <laughs> These ones are fresh pear ones, so they're a bit too fresh to do, but we've um, burned a lot on there. It's a yes pile. I've spent a couple of hours um, <laughs> shoving branches into the barrel, but it feels really good to get those branches dealt with. Some of them have been sitting there for quite a while like there were two Christmas trees in there so yep I mean one was to be fair one was the, second, the oldest one was a potted one so I don't, can't remember when I threw that out it got all just sort of diseased and dried out and stuff so I don't think that was there for two years but it's good that we got it dealt with anyway so that was corner cleared of the branches that were sitting in there so now we can actually reach our tools properly yay I've got some um from when our mulcher wasn't falling apart our basic mulcher shredder uh, we've got some mulched fruit I think it was mostly fig because it smells really nice and a bit of other 
fruit branches in there, in there, uh, for using in the pizza oven and the smoker box thing. What's that? Actually, that's sawdust. I will really make some use of that. Just need to get those cleared out next. How are you doing, Basil? Basil seems to be doing a lot better. So. Hopefully he's okay now. He's a bit more himself after a few days. What are you doing, Diesel? I'm looking much more normal now. joining us in today's vlog guys. It's hard to believe that tomorrow is spring and winter's just about at an end uh, but it was really good to get most of those branches dealt with today and start getting some stuff tidied up so that feels good. Choose to grow hope and we'll see you next time. Bye! It's a harvest moon. We're on an adventure. Scarlet this way! Where are you? Come this way! Yellow moon! There it is! Yellow moon! That's called a harvest blue moon because we had a full moon on the 1st of this month and then we've got another full moon on the 31st of this month Two full moons in a month is apparently what a blue moon is. So, something new I learnt today. So beautiful. Yeah.